Hey, everybody, Saul Marquez with the Outcomes Rocket. So excited you tuned back into our podcast today. Dr. Jeffrey Kong is the CEO of WellBe Senior Medical, a global risk home-based geriatric care medical group. As a geriatrician, he has extensive experience in global risk and primary care for the frail elderly and disabled population. He most recently was president of ChenMed and in the past has served as executive director of Urban Medical Group in Boston, where he pioneered advanced practice provider, a team-led based uh, care. And he's done a lot of different uh, projects and been a part of many different initiatives to improve this area of geriatric care. So I'm excited to have him here on the podcast. Jeff, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks, Saul. Pleasure to be here. Yeah. And so look, you've done so much. Is there anything that maybe you want to highlight from your past and the things that you've done that maybe I didn't touch on? Well, um, maybe, maybe kind of uh, spend some time just telling you a little bit about how I got into all of this. Uh, I would because love to hear kind that. Of, yeah. Kind of an interesting story. You know, maybe first I'll talk about why a doctor. Uh, this is kind of a little cultural thing, but I actually, when I was 20 years old, I had the opportunity to visit my grandparents in China for the first time. 20 years old, first time, wow. never seen them. Okay. And they, of course, asked me, well, Jeff, what do you want to do? And I say, well, I'm going to be a lawyer. They say, why be a lawyer? Be a doctor, because the human body is the same everywhere you go in the world. And you come back and serve the motherland, you know, mm. uh, because it was all about China back then. And when yeah, you make yeah. when you think about it, it makes sense. You know, laws are different country to country, right? But the human body is the same. So you can be useful kind of anywhere you go. So I yeah, changed. Yeah. And then maybe, uh, so that's medicine. Maybe the other thing is kind of why, why, um, why geriatrics? So this is a cultural thing a little bit also. Um, first of all, I, I really was very service oriented. And when you get into medicine, I found myself as an internist taking a little care of a lot of cold, sore throats. But mm -hmm. that's not why I went to medicine. I went to medicine to to take care of sick people, you know, to really make a difference. So that's, but second, the cultural thing is, you know, in the Chinese culture, you kind of are taught to respect your elders and to revere them and to honor them. Because when you think about it, they're the ones that, you know, your parents, your grandpa, they raised you and invested you and cared for you and taught you and educated you. And so I just feel like we owe this great debt back to the seniors. And so that's kind of why medicine and why geriatrics. You know, your your grandparents had a had a deep impact on you, it sounds like. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, um, maybe one other fun fact here. <laughs> you're yeah. Gonna, you're, you're gonna <laughs> get that but my last name is Kong, but that character oh, in yes, Chinese yes, yes. actually means help. And yes. so uh, when I see a Chinese patient, I'm Dr. Health. <laughs> it just made sense. It should have, it should have happened. And I'm it glad it did. <laughs> My family, I was one of the first ones to go to college. And when I was about to leave to go to college, my grandmother told me, son, make sure that you don't forget that there's a difference between being smart and intelligent. And so go get book smart, make us proud but don't forget to be intelligent. And I've never oh, forgotten cool. that from my grandma. That, that, <laughs> in a way, that is the wisdom that comes from the elderly. There is a difference. That is the wisdom that comes from. I totally agree with you. And so today's very important topic is how do we care for our elderly? And so what you're doing with your company, WellBe Senior Medical, talk to us about the focus so I get, want to give you a mental image. You know, all of us have had a, a grandparent or an aunt or an uncle or something. And think about it. Six to seven chronic disease, multiple specialists, 12 medications, maybe some arthritis so they just can't get out of the home. You know, maybe some dementia because they're a little confused or whatever. And it is really hard for those people to navigate the healthcare system. And so... The real solution, and, and I've you know, been a geriatrician for 35 years, 
the, the real solution for those people is instead of taking them and, and asking them to go to the, navigate the healthcare system, you know, go see this doctor, go see that doctor, you know, go to this clinic, whatever, is actually to bring the care to the patient in their home. Um, and, you know, for your listeners, one of the things you just kind of step back and just think about it, just, just look at what happens in a doctor's office. And you begin to realize that about 90% of that could be done at home. You know, I can take a history. I can do a physical exam. I can draw a blood test. I can do an electrocardiogram. I can even do an ultrasound. There is, and so it just makes sense from a patient's perspective, especially who's really, you know, that complicated, frail kind of grandmother kind of image. Just bring the care to them. Don't don't bring you know don't make them na navigate the healthcare system. In fact, the you know Welby Welby, uh, you're too young actually, but Welby is a play on words. Uh, there in the seventies and eighties, there was a TV show called Marcus Welby MD, okay. and that was spelled W E L B Y, so we're W E L L B E. Um, and he did home visits. He took care uh -huh. of people. So, and that was so basically uh, when I, when I try to explain what Welby does to a senior, I just say, remember Marcus Welby MD, the TV show? And they remember, like, well, that's us. You're so good at, at telling stories uh, and connecting that it's fantastic. Uh, and we could learn a lot from you there, you know, uh, um, from a marketing perspective and from the business of healthcare side, getting, getting the care to where they are. How do we do it? And how are you guys doing it in a way that's better or different than what's available already? Yeah. So I think actually it turns out if any of your listeners kind of know um, the home care space, there are a lot of what I would call point solutions in, in yeah. the home care space. So there are companies that uh, provide skilled services. They're called home health agencies. So that's a, a nurse or uh, a physical therapist. And, you know, you've had a hip fracture and you're out of the hospital, they'll help you. Okay. Then there are other companies called uh, home health, I mean, uh, personal care agencies. That's, uh, they'll help you with uh, bathing or eating or, you know, the, what's called the activities of daily living. Okay. There are third co other companies that do durable medical equipment. So they'll get your wheelchair and your, you know, your canes and your walkers. And uh, there are community service organizations that will do meals on wheels or, um, you know, help with a, adult kind of um, um, activities to keep you from being depressed, you know, just keep you active, right? So there are a lot of these things that are trying to do things in the home, and they're all great. But from a patient's perspective, it's very confusing. Who's coordinating all of that? And who orders all that? In fact, all of, most of those services require a doctor's order. Basically, think about those as subs, but Welby is like the general contractor. Mm -hmm. So we're the physician who's ordering those services, coordinating everything on behalf of the patient. So just, just kind of that image, right? You, you're trying to let's say you build a house, right? You got electricians, you got plumbers, you got, you know, concrete masoners and everything, but who kind of pulls all that together? You got, you hire a general contractor. Mm -hmm. We're basically that general contractor. We pull everything together. Does that make sense? It, it makes a lot of sense. And you, you mentioned a lot of things, like all the resources, right? Like the personal care, the home care, the durable medical, the, all of these different things, the community organizations. And, and, and half the time, we don't know what the options are. Ha you know, half the time, we don't know all of the resources. Uh, in comes Welby, and now you have all of the resources at your fingertips, and you could get access to them based off of what you need. I, I think that's brilliant, uh, and the way that you guys have aggregated uh, all of these options. And so then, as far as a business model, are you guys focused on um, Medicare Advantage, are you going broader? Are you doing Medicare? So right now it's Medicare Advantage, 100% Medicare Advantage. We're actually in seven states. 
uh, with awesome. over 100,000 people we're caring for. And uh, now, interesting enough, 20% of those people are already in Medicaid. They're dual eligible. So okay. it's, it's a lot of, it's a very poor kind of population. We will, at some point, we'll probably get into Medicaid only. And then eventually, we'll think about Medicare, traditional Medicare, Medicare fee for service. That's mm -hmm. ACO reach. That's another target. But right now we've started off with Medicare Advantage. Talk to us about some of the wins, right? Like, what have you seen that has kept you going with this? Uh, so this is interesting. Um, we started just three years ago. So you turn that clock. That was in the middle of COVID before any vaccinations. So July of 2020. Wow. That's when we started. And I'll just, have, just take you back. Remember... Everyone was locked down. They were afraid that the sick people were afraid to go see a doctor. You know, it was called deferred care back then. Yep. yep. We came along and said, look, you don't have to go out and see your doctor and take a cab and, you know, run into a hundred people on the way to the doctor's office. We will come into your home in the safety of your own home. Just one person and we'll take care of you. It was, it was really rewarding, actually. In many ways, we try to accelerate because of COVID is, is because it was a huge need and the doctors were closing their offices and everything. And we're like, well, wait a second. These people need care. We'll just take the care and see them. Well, I think the other thing, which is really fascinating, the reason it was really, I couldn't believe this, actually, but doctors were literally closing their office. And I'm saying, but wait a second. This isn't their time of need. You should be like, take care. So we, we were like, uh, but we were very uh, careful. You know, we were all, remember all the PPE, you wore masks, oh, yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. So between that period, when we started and we, when first vaccinations, right? Everyone got, all the seniors got vaccinated first. Between that period, it's yeah. about maybe eight months, we'd seen about 12,000 people encounters. Wow. And we did not have one single case of occupationally transmitted COVID. Nice. Because we were careful. So, I mean, yeah. there was all this fear, but boy, you needed people. You, you just took, care, took the right precautions. You, we, you got the care to them. And, you know, you kept them healthy as you possibly can. And you didn't transmit COVID. Yeah, for sure. That's a huge win, right? You you sort of ran to the fire and said, what are we doing here, people? Like our seniors need care. Right. So you went over and you did it. And then fast forward to today, which huge kudos to you, by the way. And I can't believe all those encounters, thousands of encounters and not a single occupationally transferred COVID case. I mean, that's a that's a huge win in my eyes. And today, you know, what are you seeing that is helping you say, man, I'm glad I'm doing this. Well, geez, you know, if, if you had five hours on this podcast, like that, we have so, <laughs> many, so many patient stories on a daily basis. I mean, it's been unbelievable. In fact, we, uh, we took some guests out recently to home to, to do a couple of home visits with us. I guess maybe the, maybe it's amazing that you can take care of their medical issues by just going, being both convenient and responsive. So someone who has an exacerbation of emphysema, we can go into their home. We can actually, we have this interesting uh, mobile paramedic program where okay. it's, it's a, think about an ambulance, uh, but in an SUV, all the equipment with a paramedic. And the, let's say you have shortness of breath and you have emphysema. We send that in, the truck in, and they can literally give you a nebulizer treatment right there. Or let's say you're dehydrated. They give you, you know, intravenous, right? So what's from a medical perspective, just being very convenient and responsive. Convenient is like in the home, right? And then responsive is I get there in 30 minutes. You can really improve people's outcomes and actually treat them in the patient's home, right? So that's kind of the medical side of the story. Then yeah. there's this, you're, you've probably had guests on that keep talking about the social determinants of health, right? Not enough food or whatever. 
Boy, if you really want to understand the social determinants of health, you go into someone's home and you know exactly what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when you see someone in the office, what they do is they dress up, you know, and they're like, you know, they're kind of on their best behavior and whatever. And, and you ask them, do they have enough food? And they say, yeah, I got plenty of food. Then you go into their home. All you have to do is open the refrigerator. That's it. And it just tells you a completely different story. The power of digital, it cannot be ignored. It's part of what we do, what we have to do. But at the same time, presence is key to make a difference. I agree with that a hundred percent. You probably, so presence for a whole variety of, from a, like that social determinants of health perspective, you get the full picture, you know, is digital or remote patient monitoring. Is it showing you that there's a tear in the rug and someone can trip over it? It's not showing you yeah. that, right? But that's kind of, uh, but that boy, that's a fall waiting to happen, right? And so you ought to do something about it. The other thing from a pure telemedicine perspective, let's say person has an abdominal pain. You can't examine someone, you know, put their hands on their abdomen and, push. and actually and push, right? You just can't do that. That's mm -hmm. a tech. Unfortunately, the technology can't do it. So there are really limits to this, to your point. There are limits to this digitization, remote patient mind technology and presence. I love the way you said that presence, right? In the, mm -hmm. in the patient's home is really gives you so much more information and, and color around kind of what's going on. Thank you for, for sharing the philosophy, the, the method, how you aggregate all of these things and some of the wins that you guys are, are getting. You know, how about the, you know, when we think about the quadruple aim, Jeff, we, we think about the clinician, right? And, and there's a lot of burned out clinicians. Talk to us about that. Are you guys employing clinicians? Are you guys offering opportunities to clinicians that are looking for something new? Yeah. Boy, boy, I can go on. For, on this one. So first of all, he says an interest. Another five hours. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. So it's interesting because uh, I'll, I'll come at this a couple of ways. Yeah. One is, is we as clinicians, as professionals, we all, most actually clinicians, just like my, my story, go into medicine because they want to care and they want to, and they want to serve and they want to make a difference. What happens though in the fee for service system is we beat that out of them. You know, we say it's not about caring patient, it's about seeing 30 patients a day. You know, you go in to see the doctor's office and they're they're like frantic. They're going in 30 patients a day, right? That's the volume-based medicine. Our well-be senior medical is is, you know, you mentioned it's global risk. We're basically we're in the we're in the value-based world which really means that our economic incentives are to keep people healthy and out of the hospital. So we actually allow our clinicians, not even allow, require, I guess, to practice medicine the way it should be practiced, to take care of the patient, spend the amount of time to, that's needed with the patient, to be empathetic, to be compassionate, to talk to the patient. Right now in the home, typically in the fee-for-service world, in the you, to make it work in the fee-for-service, you have to see eight to 12 patients a day. We're about four to five patients a day. And it's wow. not about the number of patients, it's about spending the time with the patient that you really, that they really need. Back to your question about how do we recruit people? It's because we're in this value-based world, we're basically offering the primary care clinician something that they've been looking for and they're not getting in their current job. Yeah. And their current job is just a volume game. In our job, it's about doing the right thing. You care for the patient and in our model, we actually, it's not about money, but at the end of the day, you don't, if you can't make money, you can't be sustainable, right? So in our yeah. model, 
you actually, we make more money. We keep people healthy out of the hospital. Is, isn't that something you would want? You would want a doctor that that's what they care about is keeping you healthy that's and out of the hospital. It should work. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way it should work. No, I love that. Um, folks, if you're a clinician yeah. and you're looking for, there's options out there for you. Wellbe Senior Medical is one of those options. Um, you know, and, and so as you've built this, I, I mean, and you guys have grown fast. I mean, it's been three years. What's hey, been so one I'll, of the, yeah. So I'll just be clear, just one other proof point, because I, I strongly believe I'm building a, a clinical culture that supports our clinicians, that doesn't treat the clinicians as like a cog in the wheel or, a, you know, piecemeal worker, right? So, so uh, we've only been work in existence for three years. We just were recognized last night uh, modern healthcare, uh, best places to work, 66th in the country. Nice. That's out amazing. Of all, out of all providers and health plans. So 66th in the country. Out of know. all providers and health plans. Out of all providers and health plans. And you've been in the game for three years. That's huge. That's right. Yeah. So That's I'm not, huge. But, but it's about creating that culture and supporting the clinicians to really let them care for the patient. It's not about and if you really look on what's going on in medicine in the, that fee-for-service world, number of people you can, when was the last time you saw a doctor? Uh, let's see, two months ago. And uh, well, actually, uh, it was a virtual visit. And then I went in to go do the blood work. Like I went to the lab to do the blood work. How much time do you get to spend with that doctor? It was uh, it was a thirty minute thing, uh, but it was like a concierge thing. Oh, okay. Well, now that's a different thing. So if you're in, yeah. in fact, Wellbe Senior Medical feels very similar to a concierge program. It feels because, that way to me because yeah, you get paid. what you're telling me. Yeah, you get you can get, but now you have to pay for that, right? Uh, I do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But in our situation, it's all covered by the health plan. Awesome. And basically, people get convenient access to their clinician 24-7, 365 days a year. That's what it's, it's about, convenience and responsiveness. That's what you're paying Shit. for in concierge medicine. I get my doctor. You are. You versus, are. Versus when you're not in that, you you call whatever, um, you know, your doctor at whatever Friday night. And what you get is an answering service that says, if this is an emergency, hang up and go call 911. And you... You can't get a hold of anyone who will talk to you, you know, after five o'clock. In the states that you work, you guys deploy this service as, yeah. as an option for everyone? Yeah. So short answer is yes. Um, maybe to give you the visual, the reason why it works, I'll give you Atlanta as an example. So we're in Atlanta. Sure. Right now we have three trucks with three paramedics and they're just sitting around like the fire station ready to yeah. be deployed. So you know how the fire station, they're... They're sitting around and they're playing Pinochle or whatever it is, you know. <laughs> but then when the fire happens and the call comes, they they deploy immediately. So that's exactly what it has. We have three trucks just sit, sitting around. Then call occurs, we dispatch them. And then to your point, or yeah, uh, the doctor that knows the patient is on, is on the other end. The doctor who knows the patient has sent them and says, the paramedic evaluates them and then together as a team, make a decision as what the right thing to do. But what's wow. really key is the person that the physician or clinician that knows the patient is the person who's, who's actually supervising what that paramedic is doing versus in the 911 world, an ambulance goes in, they don't know the patient at all. So they have no background. They don't understand is this the first episode of chest pain or is this the 50th episode of chest pain? They don't have any of that. And so your podcast is about outcomes, right? So the, the, we've measured the outcome, right? With this program, we've had a 33% reduction in emergency room visits. So probably that, let's say that uh, emphysema patients That would have cost from the well with the paramedic and everything, maybe five hundred to a thousand dollars. 
But then if we the patient ended up in the emergency room, it would have been probably five thousand dollars. So, yeah. uh, and but because we're at risk uh, or full, we're essentially the payer for that emergency room visit. That difference, let's say it's a four thousand dollar difference, that actually turns out to be quote profit for us. Mm. And and so that's kind of like we we. You know, I hate to say it because, again, it's not m about money. It's about care and about doing the right thing. But but in this situation, we just made more money by keeping that person, you know, treating them at home and keeping them out of the emergency room. Yeah, it's the right thing. Um, I, I love it. I can tell just from the stories you've been sharing, there's a lot of more options. I think you wanted to say something else. So I want to tee you up for that. Well, I'll just give you another, just another thing because this, people can relate to this. The, uh, you know, we've all had a loved one who is getting cancer treatment, unfortunately, right? And they're getting chemotherapy and they're nauseous and they're vomiting and, you know, they're dehydrated. So it's just a simple thing with our paramedic program, right? That's occurring. We just simply go to their home. We can give them an injection of IV Zofran, that's for the nausea, and give them, you know, IV fluids. That's pretty straightforward. Now, it's the same thing that would occur in the hospital, but if they went to the hospital or an emergency room, first of all, it's uncomfortable, you know, the cold yeah. room or whatever. And second of all, it would have cost, you know, five times more. Fantastic that you guys are doing this, aggregating it all in a way that makes it simple for everyone. And the family, right? I mean, like, like we talk about stakeholders, the family. It's hard work as a caregiver. And if you have somebody on your team, like Welby Senior Medical, boy, talk about relieving the stress. Absolutely. In fact, the, the one of the first things we do with this that's frail, frail by, let's say they're demented, is we figure out who the caregiver is. Let's say it's a daughter or a sister or something. And then we actually form a therapeutic alliance with that person and say, hey, look, you know, we're here. Call us first. Tell us what's going on, whatever. So that we, we think about that. It's interesting. We think about that caregiver as an extension of the team. And then to your point, it's the other way around. The caregiver thinks about us as that, that valuable asset that can kind of really make it all work. Totally. I love that. So, so then the, as a caregiver, I would be able to have access to the platform as well and kind of be part of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's great. That's great. Well, look, this has been informative. Dr. Kong, I know that we, we, we should probably visit again in the next six, seven months. I'd love to hear how things are going and, and, uh, get inspired by the type of care that you guys are delivering. If uh, you had one thing you wanted to leave the listeners with today, what would it be? Yeah, so, you know, you actually kind of said it, but I'm just going to reemphasize. Okay. <laughs> I think it's, it's our responsibility to make healthcare easy. That's our promise, is to make healthcare easy. We, in general, have made healthcare so complicated. It's been fragmented, you know, multiple different providers every time. Or doctor, the patient is like, I sees one doctor for prevention, one doctor for chronic disease, one doctor for palliative care. You wonder why people are confused and just that we basically think about us as the navigator or the, and the advocate, you know, who's working on your behalf. You know, I've said the general contractor also, I mean, a couple of ways to think about it, but the yeah. goal is to make healthcare easier. Well said. Let's make it easier, folks, on ourselves, our loved ones. Check out the work that Dr. Kong and his team, WellBe Senior Medical, are up to in the show notes. We'll leave links to their company. And, and if anybody wants to get in touch with you or, or anybody on your team, Jeff, how do they do it? It's very simple. Go to WellBe, W-E-L-L-B-E.com, and there's a contact place for that. Amazing. So take action, folks. That's how you get outcomes. And Dr. Kong, I want to thank you 
for taking action and being with us today to share the message that you and your team are up to. Saul, thank you very much. And just remember, it's not about being smart. It's about being intelligent. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that, Dr. Health. <laughs> <laughs> See, you. See you later.